Welcome back to Triple Trouble. Uh, today we are going to talk about the most common mistakes we see all the time uh, on the archery field. Yeah, so uh, we have a couple examples uh, for you guys. Yes, shooting a compound bow. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Shooting a compound <laughs> bow. No, this, this is important. This is the worst thing you can do. This has nothing to do with archery. Shooting a compound bow. And you know what sucks? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so mistake number one, my, my hand needs to end up on my shoulder is what we often hear and see. So you get, you get something looking like this. Okay, so this is what you don't want. Um, if you need to pull back your hand to get it on your shoulder, there, was, there wasn't the right tension in your body anyway, so there's no point in doing that. So what you do want is that the hand ends up somewhere above your shoulder as a result of the tension in your shot. So you want to imagine pushing your hand and your, the point of your elbow out, um, away from each other. And as a result, while well ma maintaining the right back, back tension, as a result, your, your hand will end up somewhere above your shoulder. So here's uh, what it should look like. He increases the tension between his elbow and his hand. And then as a result, while only releasing the fingers from the string, that's where he ends up and this is great. Another version of this we see very often is not going outwards and then back to the shoulder, but being very static in your release and then going backwards, um, which Jaap is apparently an expert in. Yeah, not great. Hey, uh, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Yeah, my arrows keep uh, ending up on the left and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. W would you mind having a look? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you're consistently hitting left? Yeah, that's okay. right, yeah. So it seems like you're throwing your bow arm to the left after you shoot. So oh. maybe, maybe you can uh, consider using a finger sling so you can relax your hand. Yeah, uh, yeah I've tried that, but uh, that doesn't really work for me. I mean, yeah. Okay. I tried it, so yeah. Okay, maybe try it again. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll try again, but I'm quite sure it doesn't work for me as a person. You know, I'm yeah. I just like to hold it. Uh, to, yeah. This is a typical example as well for um, uh, a lot of beginning archers or or archers that have been shooting for a while um, that they have tried something. Uh, it didn't work back then, or it didn't feel comfortable, so they just. Uh, shoot down the idea completely. Uh, whereas oftentimes something that you try for the first time doesn't feel comfortable uh, because it's foreign. Um, so yeah, might as well try it again, if, uh, especially if somebody with a lot of knowledge and experience will uh, give you some advice. Uh, you probably want to take that uh, and, and yeah, run with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always think if you see the best artist in the world doing this, <laughs> yeah. there's probably all a reason. Yeah. yeah, all of them using yeah. a finger sling, for example. There's probably a good reason to, so yeah, try it again. I once struggled for about three or four months with my shoulder, my left shoulder, to get it in the right position. It took me ages, but I knew I need to get this right before I can go to the next step. So felt like shit. My scores went down and everything was hard and difficult, but at the end I got it and then uh, everything got better again. So yeah, just have to struggle through it sometimes. But keep in mind, um, uh, yeah, keep asking for advice and keep asking for uh, people to check uh, to see if what you're doing helps or not, or, yeah, in the right way, so. So another very common mistake is that people um, have uh, started using a finger sling. Um, they have adapted to shooting with one, uh, but they don't actually use it. Um, so right before they release, they grab the bow anyways. So uh, yeah, here's an example of what that looks like. Ja, dus uh, die wedstrijd was ik gewoon uh, ja, gewoon niet geconcentreerd en uh, ja, weet je wel, het is best wel irritant als je dan als je dan gewoon uh, je best doet, maar dan tijdens de wedstrijd uh, 
Ja, dan lukt het gewoon niet of zo. Echt, uh... Ja, weet je, ik weet niet hoe jouw ervaring daarmee is, maar uh, bij mij is dat altijd best wel een dingetje. Dat ik dan, uh... Heb je het tegen mij? Ja. Oh. oh. <laughs> Moet ik er nou opnieuw? Uh, ja. <laughs> nou, ik zei dus dat ik de, bij een wedstrijd gewoon <laughs> best wel moeite mee heb om dan zeg maar de hele tijd... Uh, okay. ja. <laughs> zo. <laughs> zo. Point of this one. <laughs> Continuously talking and doing shit that has nothing to do with archery while you're training. You're not training if you're doing this. You're just shooting arrows, you won't get any better. So take your time, concentrate on your arrows while you're shooting and talk behind the line. Uh, and also a side point, side point uh, sometimes people don't want to be talked to while they're shooting <laughs> yeah, so on the line. Sometimes in this case, if I, uh, if I would be serious in my training and somebody is constantly yapping uh, while shooting, then that would also be a distraction to me. Um, you could say you don't have or you want to be able to uh, deal with those distractions, but I think um, yeah, there's also a bit of uh, etiquette uh, on the line that you don't talk to one another. <laughs> I got a new bow. Mm -hmm. 74 pounds. Okay. Pretty sure I can shoot anything with this beast of a bow. Really? Hmm. Yeah. See how high that went? Yeah, it's heavy. It's, it's, de it's definitely <laughs> heavy. Let me... <laughs> Look at the yeah. power of this thing. Yeah, it, it does have a lot of power. <laughs> the point of this is obviously that uh, shooting a heavier bow doesn't make you more cool or uh, a better archer. And uh, we see this quite a lot where people just keep increasing poundage because they want to have the heaviest bow at the club or they want to uh, shoot over 40 pounds just for like uh, bragging rights or something. Um, shoot at a uh, poundage that is comfortable for you and that you can um, well, shoot a lot of arrows with so you can make the volume that you need to shoot uh, to reach a certain level. Yeah, uh, war, we, we do like war bow archers, English yeah. war bow that awesome stuff. Yeah, completely different game. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a nice bow for uh, shooting for half a year. Yeah, I got this off eBay. Uh, yeah, I really like it. Ah, it looks cool. Yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, how uh, really how nice heavy bow. are the limbs? Uh, I'm not sure. They just came with the bow, so... Uh, okay. Yeah, it looks great. Shooting uh, a really high-end bow if you're just a beginner, uh, which is way too heavy probably for you, uh, and expect them to uh, keep your form. Yeah, well. of course there is uh, some good deals sometimes on eBay or uh, whatever they use in your country. Um, but you need to be well informed of the choices that you make. So uh, very often I, I used to work in an archery shop and very often we would get people that would just buy a bow uh, and then come into the shop like it's a little heavy, can you turn it down for me? Um, and then they would have, uh, they often bought a bow that's like 40 pounds even if they're shooting <laughs> for a couple months. So. Um, be well informed of the uh, choices you make, especially with uh, second-hand uh, equipment. Um, and um, another thing to note is that um, a very expensive bow doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to shoot more points. Um, in the beginning, I would just say uh, invest in a bow that you can grow in uh, so that you can replace the parts and that you can grow um, according to your shooting level. But uh, you don't have to invest in the most expensive bow out there. Another common mistake we see, uh, especially in the clubs uh, that we shoot in, is uh, spending a little bit too much money on... Oh, compound! On. Again, compound! This is the reason why you shoot compound. Nobody loves you, nobody likes you, and you think, oh, I got an engineering job. If I spend all my money on expensive stuff, other people will like me, they'll be impressed. This is not how it works. You will never be cool. So something we see quite often, especially with uh, uh, the non-technical archers, so uh, like the traditional and the barebow shooters, is um, that they'll be very focused and very uh, technical with pulling back. And then the last little bit, 
they'll speed up and just suddenly release. So uh, the app has done this for many, many years, and <laughs> he's only uh, just yeah. figured out how to not do it. But uh, I'm an expert. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I have many, many uh, memories of the app shooting. Like um, he's looking at the animal in this uh, 3D archery uh, game, looking at the animal and then going like, okay, and then play technical, and then the last. 10 centimeters or so, he just pulls back and releases immediately and uh, like blatantly misses. Yeah, that was pretty much how I've seen Yap shoot for many years. Yeah, yeah it's uh, yeah, your mind thinks the trigger for releasing is when the uh, string touches your anchor point and then it gets worse, worse over the days and over the years, to be honest. So fix that. It's pretty much target panic, what we're talking about. Yep. So the next one uh, we see very often is people pulling the arrow through the clicker and then waiting for a few seconds until they shoot. That's not how the clicker is supposed to be used. Uh, or they don't use a clicker at all on a recurve bow, which granted if you're a beginner and you don't have your own bow and that, that kind of stuff, sure. But if you're anyway uh, a bit advanced, use the clicker and use it like it's meant to. So when the thing clicks, you shoot and get used to that. So you don't you don't want to learn yourself that when the thing clicks and you're not exactly in the middle of the yellow, that you're going to doubt yourself. No, you just want to shoot your best shot and trust that it's going to get uh, there, exactly there in the middle. Yeah, if you do it often enough, if you um, shoot a shot that's not exactly aimed in the middle often enough, you will automatically learn how to correct for it and get it into the middle. Jeff, Jeff, for instance, just 21 oh, years old. Oh, yeah. There he is. Draw for a long time. Uh, <laughs> um, have you have you ever noticed? You're quite like not straight. <laughs> yeah, this is traditional. Yeah, this is how you shoot traditional archery. Okay, this is different than uh, you, you do recurve or something. Yeah, yeah, but no, this is this completely different. <laughs> the, no, yeah, this is okay, nothing to do with art with uh, recurve. Don't you have like a, just a basic technique in? Uh... Yeah, this is my this is my hunting technique. Okay? Oh, okay, this is how I hunt. Okay, you need to be able to. Uh, shoot everywhere uh, with the with the same shoulder position that's the most important not like uh, some bullshit uh, recurve technique that everybody uses it has nothing to do with traditional bows you're never going to be able to pull a, a 50 or 60 pound bow uh, in the way you do so uh... <laughs> <laughs> So I truly used to believe that traditional archery or any kind of bow is completely different from, for example, recurve technique and that it didn't have anything to do with each other. Well, guess what? <laughs> recurve, the recurve technique is just made so it's easy to be consistent. And what do you want in archery being consistent? Now, obviously, again, if you shoot a horse bow from, a, from the back of a horse or if you shoot an English war bow, there are differences, but mainly when you're shooting 3D uh, field, uh, indoor, doesn't matter, it's all target archery basically, and you want to be as consistent as you can. And that's why uh, they pretty much, uh, well, made the recurve technique as it is, and the compound technique is also very similar to that, so. Uh... So something to keep in mind, especially on your first archery lessons, is don't wear clothing that's too thick. Try to go for a tight fit so uh, the clothing doesn't get in, in the way of your mainly bowstring. And if you, yeah, nice. Good example. <laughs> and if you do need to wear thick clothing because you're cold, then at least use a chest protector. Okay, so these are the most common mistakes we see all the time. And uh, I'm sure you guys also see some things um, please mention them in the, in the comments and uh, we might make another video on that. Yeah, thanks for watching this video. Um, it's been a while since we've, we've made one, so I hope you enjoy this one and uh, we might find some time to do some more. <laughs>
Ja, ja, ja. Hoppa. Kijk ook even. Ja, doe dan. Doe dan. Hoppa.